Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so excited today. Let me just tell you guys something. God is so good. He is so amazing. He is so awesome. Good morning, mom. God is just so good. I'm telling you, I've just been over here having a whole Holy Ghost fit this morning. I'm over here singing. I'm worshiping. I'm praising God. God is downloading so much stuff. When I tell you he's just good, I'm just excited to be here today. So good morning, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Tomorrow, is what lady t talks i'm just i'm just, i just love god like i just love him so much he's just so good but anyway thank you guys for tuning in as you come in say hi good morning good afternoon good evening depending on when you are watching this video where you're watching this video i don't know which time zone you're coming in from but just let me know who's watching um let me know where you're tuning in from TikTok so we can see how far our reach is getting. I'm telling you, God has got people from all over the world tuning into my videos and um, my talk, my mornings with Lady T Talks, and I'm excited. And for all of you first-time visitors, hey, from Texas, all of my first-time visitors, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Talana Bart-Allen, and I am... Um, a transformational life relationship health and wellness coach change agent and problem solver and i love the lord and i love you today and i thank you guys so much for tuning in um i come live every single morning monday through friday at 8 a.m eastern standard time so i thank you guys for tuning in i don't take it lightly um but i really appreciate you guys for coming in and um tuning in and i bind every distraction right now in the name of jesus i knew the devil was gonna come i knew he was gonna send his little imps to come but i bind and rebuke you now in jesus name i'm gonna teach the word i'm gonna do what god called me to do and i just love him for it every single broadcast i start with our affirmations and i start with um good morning yes um i start with our affirmations and i start with our confessions because what you say you will have right you have to understand that whatever you speak out of your mouth that is what you're going to have so you got to be careful to speak the right words over your life so let's get this party started i am what god's word says i am i am who god says i am right i can do all that god says i can do i'm not weak i'm strong i'm not bound i'm free i'm not sick i'm healed i am living on top I am prospering in all that I do. I am thriving and flourishing in my mind, in my business, on my job, in my family, in my relationships, and in my life. Good morning, Spree. Good morning, Mom. Good morning on TikTok. Thank you, Jessica, for tuning in today. I am growing into the person that God designed me to be. I am a money magnet. Money flows to me with ease. I am rich. I am a millionaire. I attract millions of dollars. They come to me now. I am able to give more and serve more because I have more to give. I am healed, I am delivered, and I am set free. I am whole and complete in Christ. I forgive easily and quickly. I am grateful for this day. I am a believer. This is my confession, and I'm sticking to it. I won't back out. I won't bow down. I will not give in to the enemy's tactics or tricks. I will not allow the enemy to discourage me, to defeat me, because he's already defeated. He can't defeat me because he's already defeated. Hey, bro, thank you for tuning in this morning. Listen Listen to me. I'm excited about the word that God gave me on today. I'm excited because listen, God is up to some amazing things in our life and God really wants to bless us tremendously. So do me a couple of favors. Tag your friends and families in this video. They need this word on today. Share this on your timeline so that people can see that we are live. I don't have enough time to tag all the people that would like to be a part of this video. So if you share it on your timeline and you tag your friends and family, we we can get this party started all right so thank you guys for tuning in this week we've been talking about the power of agreement listen to me you have to get an agreement with what god wants for you you have to know that god wants some amazing things for you that he has some great things in store for you listen to me if you don't like it get off my live you don't got to be here keep strolling like get on out of here in jesus name you got to understand that god has some amazing things in store for you and he wants to see you blessed he wants to see you prosperous he wants to see you operating in the things of god and you have to understand that the devil is going to do everything in his power to stop 
stop you because you're a threat to his kingdom. You are a threat to the things of God. That's why every single day, the devil always tries to send people to my videos to distract me, but I rebuke and bind it in Jesus name. I'm going to teach the word. I'm going to keep teaching it until God moves in this and in, in the people of God's life. Listen to me. God is up to something. There is power in agreement. Do you agree with that? There's power in agreement. You, what you give agreement to is what you're going to manifest in your life. If you give agreement to lack, to not enough, if you give agreement to those things that are not serving you, that are not helping you, to your mind, to your marriage not working, to your children not doing what they're supposed to do, to you, you can't pay your bills and you got all these other things on there. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. God will bless you when you speak the right things and get in agreement with him. I promise you he will. I promise you that he will. He will bless you beyond what you could ask or think. That's what the Bible says. I'm excited because as I've been praying and meditating on this word and just spending time talking to God and, and literally um, just, just asking God to fill my mind with his purpose and plan for my life. God is literally, he was blown. I was sitting over here this morning, just like mouth on the floor. Like, God, really? Really? <laughs> You're so good. He just has a way to bring it together. Yesterday, I talked about that we settle for less than what God's best is for your life, right? We settle for it. Why do we settle for it? Who can tell me why we settle for less than God's best for our life? I can tell you why. Let me tell you why. One, we settle, We have settled so long because we're so used to bad things happening to us. We're so used to things not working for us, not benefiting us, people not supporting us, people not. Listen, I've started, I don't know how many businesses, this is embarrassing to say, but I've started businesses, people will not support you. People you think should support you don't support you. People you think should be in your corner is not in your corner. People you think should buy from you, buy your products and your service, they don't do it, right? Listen to me. Yes, mindset, absolutely. Mindset is one, right? So mindset, right? Bad things always happen to us, right? Our expectations have been like, it's like the air has been let out of our expectations. I don't expect it anymore. I expect bad things to happen happen to me. This is not the will of God for our life, right? Things are going to happen to us. God, the Bible lets us know that things are going to happen to us, right? Though those fiery trials come to try me, right? Though those things come, God has going to lift up his standard against them. God has your back. You have to understand that the enemy is desired, the, his main job is to kill, steal, and destroy, but he wants to distract us. He wants us to to distract us from the purpose and plan that God has for our life, right? And the distraction is, do I, I got my definition here. Do I, did I look up distraction? Hold on, guys. Give me a second. I got notes everywhere, y'all. Pray for us, sister, please. Distraction is getting your mind off of what, 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 whatever it is that you're trying to focus on, right? God wants us to focus on him. He wants to focus, want us to focus on his plan and his purpose for our life. So the devil sends distractions. The devil sends his little imps and enemies to distract us, to get us unfocused, right? To say, we're, we're sitting up here, we're quoting the word of God. We're believing the word of God. We're standing on the word of God. And then guess what happens? Here comes a distraction. Here comes something that, that the devil wants to keep you from getting what God has for you, right? So if he can get you distracted from your purpose, you never walk and operate in your purpose. If he can keep you distracted from the things that God has for you, you'll never fully have all that God has for you. Why? Because you're distracted. You're living a life of distraction. We're living a life of lack. We're living a life of not enough because we have allowed the enemy to come in and distract us from God's purpose and plan for our life. We've allowed the enemy to come in and wreak havoc in our life, right? When we say all hell done broke loose, well, all hell can break loose, but God is going to lift up his standard in the midst of it. He's going to give you the help that you need. He's going to rescue you, but you got to get in agreement with him. You got to get in agreement with his words. You got to understand that God cares about you and he loves you and he wants what's best for you. And the enemy don't care nothing about you. He don't love you. He, he, he tricks us, right? He'll trick the people to thinking that he has their back. He'll give them a little taste of what goodness is. And then he'll snatch it right back from you. That's what the devil does, right? He gives you little teasers. God doesn't do that. God, what did I tell you guys the other day? The blessings of God are pouring out 
We're out of the will of God. We're distracted. We're not doing what God wants us to do. Once we repent and get back in line, the blessings are already flowing. You just get back in position to receive it. You got to get in agreement with what God's word says. You got to stop bowing to what it feels like, what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it sounds like. And you got to say, God, for you, I live, move, and have my being. I will do what you want me to do. I will operate and be who you call me to be. I refuse to bow to the hand of the enemy. I refuse to dig, to give in to what he wants, right? So now today, I want you to start expecting God to move. I want you to start expecting God to bless you in your family, in your relationships, at your job, on your businesses, whatever it is that you put your hands to do. I expect, I want you to expect God to move and manifest his self in your life in your situation, in your marriage, in your, in your, with your children, with your grandchildren, with your health. I want you to expect God. How many of us have gone to the doctors and we expect the doctor to give us bad news because we're, we went to the doctors because we weren't feeling well. So we're expecting to hear what that doctor is going to tell us about our health condition, right? So we go to the doctors and we're like, yeah, I got this problem, that problem, this problem. And then they come in and they give us a prognosis that's not favorable to what we want to hear. And then we give agreement to it because we say, oh, the doctor says I have high blood pressure. I have sugar diabetes. I have cancer. I have COVID. I have this. I have heart problems. I have kidney problems. I have... Li so now we've agreed with what the doctor has told us. So that that the doctor told us manifests because we've given it power to manifest in our life because we agreed with it. Come on, y'all. Listen to me. God says it's time to get an agreement with what his word says. I'm going to the doctors because I have this ailment. Tell me what that ailment is, but it is not mine. It is an ailment that has to bow to the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease has to bow to the name of Jesus. And that's what you have to decree and declare over your life, that it cannot and will not operate in my life. Thank you for that high blood pressure diagnosis, but I do not have high blood pressure. By his stripes, I am healed. That is what the word of God tells me, that by his stripes, I am healed. So I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to stand on what he says. So thank you for the ca cancer diagnosis. Thank you for the COVID diagnosis. Thank you for the kidney diagnosis. But by his stripes, I am healed. That is what I'm going to say. The doctor said this, but whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord? Will you get an agreement with what God has to say about you? Will you get an agreement with what God feels about you? How he loves you? How he cares about you? How he wants to bless you? Will you get an agreement with God today? Will you understand that I'm going to say it? I don't care. I might, I might can't breathe. I might can't think, whatever. I'm going to decree, decree and declare what God's word says about me. Stop expecting the worst and start expecting the best. What you, what you agree with is what you're going to manifest. We have manifested unexpectations. We have manifested things not working for us. Bank account is in the negative. Bank account is on zero. Bank account is not enough. We have manifested that by what we have believed. And what we have agreed with. It's the truth. You have to decree and declare that today it's working for my good. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. I feel a shift in my finances. I feel a shift in my health. I feel a shift in my business. I feel the move of God in my life. And I decree and declare, and I will stand on his word. And to, he said before one jot or tittle of his word fails, heaven and earth will pass away. So let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you. What that means is that God can do anything but fail. Change your expectations today from not work from it not working to it's got to work. I'm going to say it until it manifests. I'm going to say it until I believe it. We've said we're broke for so long. We've said we're he healed. We're sick for so long. We've said we don't have enough for so long that we believe it. We manifested that thing in our life because that's what we spoke all the time. Whatever you say is what you're going to have. You have to understand that that's not God's plan for your life. Stop giving agreement and agreeing with the wrong voices that you shouldn't be even hearing. You shouldn't even be listening to those voices. A stranger's I will not follow. Don't follow the strange voice. Excuse me. 
follow the voice of the Lord. Well, I don't know the voice of the Lord. I don't know. Well, then you know why you don't know it? Because you don't spend enough time with him. You have to spend time. Though, Listen, I know when my daughter Spree calls me. I know when my mom calls me. I know when my husband calls me. I know each one of my children's voice and each one of my daughter in love's voice. I know my in-law. I know people that I spend time with. I know their voice. I know their voice. You know why? Because I spend time with them. I know the voice of the Lord because I spend time with him. So when God speaks to me, I know that it's him speaking, right? So you got to understand that you can't expect, if you don't know the voice of God, whose fault is that? That's your own fault that you don't know it. You got to spend quality time with him and ask him to make his voice known to you. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. We got to stop following those people who don't mean us any good, who are speaking damnation into our life, who doesn't believe in in us and is speaking all kind of crazy things in our life, talking about us, kicking us in the back. Why do we keep associating ourselves with those kind of people? Well, that's my this person. That's my that person. That's my family. I don't care who you are. Who is my father and my mother and my brother, except them that do the will of my father. Come on. There's a scripture for everything. We have to understand and stand on God's word, no matter what it looks like. So we have settle long enough for things that are mediocre in our life or mediocre in our life. We have to stop allowing God to, I mean, stop allowing the enemy to get us sidetracked from God's plan and purpose. It, listen to me, when you are speaking and agreeing with God, right? Because we don't see God, we can't touch God, right? We can't physically put our hands on God. So it, it's almost like it's hard to believe him because I can't physically touch him. But faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? The evidence of things that I don't see. I got that today. I want to read that out of the, where did I, what did I do with that? Uh, where did I do with it? Right here. I want to read it out of the Amplified version. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Amplified Version. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation of the things that I hope for divinely guaranteed and the evidence of the things not seen. I, I don't see it. I, I, I can't touch it. It's not tangible, right? But it's, wait, he said, but, and it's the evidence of things. The evidence, the evidence, I haven't seen it, but it's the evidence. <laughs> You got to go back and remind yourself what God has already done. How many times he's already paid your bills? How many times he's already worked it out? How many times he's already healed your body? How many times he's already delivered you? Sometimes you got to encourage yourself with the testimonies from your past. The things that God has already brought you out of. I shall believe the report of the Lord. If you did it, then you'll do it again. If you did it this time, you'll do it again. That's what you got to believe and stand on. There is evidence. All you got to do is think back and look back to what you've been through in your life and what God God has brought you out. Listen to me, right? You have to look back on what the enemy, I mean, what God has already done for you so that you can remind yourself that he can do it again. If you did it before, you'll do it again, right? So he says, um, not see the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact, what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So you might not be able to feel it, taste it, touch it, smell it, or tangibly put your hands on it. But you got to know and comprehend that God, you said that you were going to do this. So I cannot doubt in my mind. I cannot fear, right? Help out my unbelief. You so mean to fear not for you are with me. So, right? We got we to gotta literally say what the word says. And when you're in the crisis, when you're in the situation, when everything is happening, all hell has broken loose in your life how challenging is is it for you to actually say what god says it is very challenging but if you're doing it on a continual basis every single day when a challenge comes when all hell breaks loose you will do and say what god's word says I'm a firm believer because last month, all hell broke loose in my house. Everything that could go, well, I ain't going to say everything because a lot of more stuff could have went wrong, but a lot of things went wrong. A lot of things went haywire, but I said, God, I love you and I want to please you. I don't want to do it my way because my way is going to take me backwards. I don't have time to keep going through the same test over and over and over again. 
I'm going to learn what I need to learn in this test so that I don't have to repeat it. There's too much stuff that I got to do. God has opened up my mind to see all the things that he wants me to do. And if I have to keep repeating tests, right? If I got to keep repeating the first grade, the second grade, the third grade, the fourth, when am I going to ever get done school? If I keep getting left back in school, I'm going to have to keep repeating the class until I can pass it. We got to get out of that mindset that I'm going to just keep repeating this test. No, the devil is a liar. I'm going to pass this test and I'm going to pass it with flying colors. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of times we pray out of our desperation. We need God to move now. Like, God, I need you to come now. You don't understand. Like, not another second, not another minute. I need you now. Like, that song, Smokey Northford, I think is the one that sent it. And we, we, that's how we pray. God, move now. God, do it now. And guess what? When he don't come, when we think he should come, we get discouraged. The devil say, see, you've been praying and God didn't answer your prayer. See, you, he said he would supply all your need, but you still, the devil be up here trying to convince. And what you got to do is tell him to shut up. Say, listen, devil, shut up. God is going to supply my need because his word says he supplies my every need. So because he said it in his word, he has to do it. He has to fulfill it. If he said it, he'll do it. Stop letting the devil talk you out of your blessings. Stop agreeing with the enemy and start agreeing with what God's word says. If he said he's going to supply your need, you stand on that and de decree and declare that he's going to meet your need. You don't got to pray out of desperation. You don't got to pray out of fear. You don't got to pray out of anxiety. All you have to do is say what his word says and choose to believe it. Where is that scripture? No, not that one. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me read the scripture to you. Mark 11, 20 through 24. It says, say to the mountain or situation, whatever the situation is, whatever the mountain is in your life, you speak to it. You call lack, sickness, disease, poverty, negative mindset, negative doctor's report, cancer, high blood pressure, whatever it is, Speak to it. It says, say to the mountain, whatever I just said, whatever you're facing, whatever you got on your plate, whatever the devil done, done put in your pathway, whatever is coming against you, right? You say to that thing, whatever it is, and this is out of the Amplified Bible. It says, say to the mountain, it says situation. It is a situation that's not benefiting you. It's a stumbling block. It's a hindrance. It is not what God intended for your life. Speak to it. Be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. You cannot doubt that God is going to do it. You cannot fear that God is not going to do it because if you do, it will not move. You got to speak to it and does not doubt in his heart, in his mind, in his thinking. Don't doubt that it's not going to happen. Well, what if it don't happen? But what if it does happen? What if God actually does pull through right now? What if he does actually do it? What if? We don't know if we won't try, right? So don't doubt in your heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass. If it will be done unto, and it will be done unto him. Therefore, I tell you that whatsoever things you ask for in prayer, believe that you have it and it will be yours. Come on, y'all. This is the word of God. That's what we have to understand. I'm going to speak to this situation. I'm going to speak to this circumstance. I'm going to speak to this lack. Lack, you do not belong here. Not enough. You do not belong here. God, it is your responsibility to take care of me. It is your responsibility to meet my needs. It is your responsibility to heal me. It is your responsibility for you to do what God wants you to do in our life. That's what you need to understand. That's what you need to see. That it is God's responsibility to do what he's supposed to do in our life. It is not my job. It is not my responsibility. My responsibility is to believe the report of the Lord. To get in agreement with what God's word says about me. To get in agreement with what God's word says about my situation. It is for me to see that this is not what God ordained. This is not what God's word says. So I speak to you and I come 
command you to move now. Get up out of here now. I don't fear that it's not going to happen. Just like I said the other day, I'm going to do it again just for GP purposes, right? General principle. I'm going to throw this behind me and I must know that it's going to fall. Get out of here, right? I don't have to turn around and look to see that it fell. I know that it fell. <laughs> you don't got to look and see if once you prayed, if God going to answer it. You just got to know in your knower that God going to do it. He said he going to do it. That settles it. Like, I'm not going to worry about it. Right. And then when worry and cre when anxiety and worry and fear try to come, you say, I, I don't worry. I'm not going to fear. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust that he's going to do exactly what he said. I'm going to trust that he's going to fulfill the word that he promised me. I'm going to trust that God. He said before one jot or tittle of his word pass away, uh, fails, heaven and earth will pass away. Well, I'm still living here on earth. So obviously he has, it hasn't failed yet. So he's obligated to do it. He's obligated to do it. Get an agreement. Get an agreement with what God wants, knowing that he, he loves you so much. And he wants to give you the keys to the kingdom. He wants to give you this amazing, crazy life. He wants to give you wealth. He wants to give you prosperity. He wants to give you a, a joy, peace, love, happiness. He wants to give you perfect health. God has some amazing things in store for you, but you got to get in agreement with what he wants. You got to stop worrying about if it's going to work and start thanking God because it is working. It's working for my good. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what the devil say. If it don't happen now, it'll happen tomorrow. If it don't happen tomorrow, it's going to happen the next day. Because guess what? If I keep thinking like that, it's going to happen. It's going to manifest. Why? Because that's what I say. I just choose to believe God. I just choose to stand on his word. It is his pleasure to give me the kingdom. That's what his word says. But you can't quote it if you don't know it. Okay? All right. Pray, pray not a, so desperation means a loss of hope or surrender to despair, a state of hope and hopelessness leading to rashness. We make rational decisions and things because we're desperate. I need it to work now. That's why people commit crimes because they're like, I, I got to make it happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's got to, and we make foolish decisions because we're desperate for God to move or for a situation to change. And we see it unchanging. So we start getting rational now. We start trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. Listen to me. There was a point in time in my life. I was working my eight hour, 12 hour, whatever amount of hours I was working a day. Ridiculous. I was coming home, picking my husband up. We was going door dash until nine, 10 o'clock at night. I was coming home. I was exhausted, getting in my bed, going to sleep, getting up, going to work, doing it all every single day. I was door dashing, Instacarting, um, uh, Ubering, all of these things, wearing myself out trying to make it happen. They cut my hours at work. I have less money coming in, but God, is, the bills are still getting paid. <laughs> when you don't act in desperation, God says I could do something with that. The God says you, you, you're trusting me. You're trusting me to work it out. You're trusting me to do it. I thank you, child, because you're trusting me to do it. I stand on His word. It doesn't always feel good to my natural being. It doesn't feel good to my flesh, man, because I'm believing something that I can't tangibly feel. I'm believing in a God that I can't tangibly touch. But it's the substance. It's the, it's, I, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you're going to do it, God. He said, and your hope won't make you ashamed. Listen to me. Moved by desperation or utter loss of hope. I'm sorry, that was, oh, I'm sorry, that was desperation. Desperate means having lost hope, having no, listen to me, this blew me away. Desperate means having lost hope. That means you don't have no more hope, you don't lost it. Giving no ground for hope. So you done lost it. And then there's no way in the world that you're believing that it's going to come back. Oh my God. This is what a desperate part, you just completely done lost hope. You're just like, it just ain't going to work no more. What did I say? You have settled for so long that that has become your reality. You have settled for so long for not having enough that that is your reality. God, I, things never work out for me. Nothing good ever happens to me. I never win. I never get this. I never, like, that's just your attitude. You're desperate. 
<laughs> moved by despair or utter loss of hope. Like it done said hope three times in a, in the definition definition of desperate. It done said the word hope three times. Listen to me. You have to understand. First of all, tell yourself hashtag. It's not about me. Hashtag. It's not about me. Please, y'all. It is not about me. We make it about ourselves. I gotta make it happen. If it if I don't make it happen, it ain't gonna happen. Well, guess what? It ain't gonna happen because one, that's what you said. Two, because you're trying to do it instead of letting God do it. So listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, Linda, listen. Stop being desperate for things to work and just start thanking God and praising God because he's going to do exactly what he said. You have to do it in your pain. You have to do it in your tears. You got to do it when, when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. Listen to me. I have cried a many a days. I have cried because God, I'm like, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't see how you're going to do it, but your word tells me that you're going to do it. So I just want to trust you. I don't want to pray out of my desperation. I don't want to beg you. I don't want to plead with you. I am your child. I don't have to beg and plead. When you don't understand who you are, you are begging God to do something because you don't know who you are. You don't know whose you are. You are begging God to do something for you when that is not your job to do. He said, ask and it shall be given unto you. He said, give and it will be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together. Will he cause men to give into your bosom? When you get in a place and you understand who you are, then you will command it to come. God, you said, I'm a giver. I'm a tither. I'm obedient. I'm doing everything I possibly know to do to obey you. You are obligated to bless me. We got to stop acting like weak Christians, like weak believers, like weak children. If my child came to me and asked me for something and kept asking, how many of you got kids that have ever done this? Mom, 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 or dad, dad, just keep calling your name. It aggravates you because you're like, will you please just shut up already? What do you want? What do you want from me? We're not about to do this. Like, just say what you want. Say what you want. And let's get it over with. If they just keep coming to you, say, okay, so say, how many of us got kids that will ask you for something, right? And when you, and when you don't do it right away, then they come back and ask you again. You know what I tell people? I start telling people this. I said, if you ask me one more time, the answer is automatically no. Like, stop coming to me asking me the same question. You're getting on my... How do you think God feels when we keep going to him, asking him to do the same thing over and over and over? He said in his word, it's your faith, be it unto you. Because of your faith, I'm going to do it. You want to be... You want to... Because of your faith. Oh, ye of little faith. You've been asking me, asking me. You ain't got no faith. Come on now. This is... what I'm in the book. I know I'm in the book. I know I'm in the book. Right? So stop being desperate. Stop allowing the enemy to make you desperate. Stop allowing situations and circumstances to make you desperate. Like, is it going to work? I don't know if it's going to work. Like, don't. Get back in line. Get in agreement with what God wants for your life. Ex <laughs> this one right here. Ex suffering, I'm sorry, suffering extreme need or anxiety. This is desperate. You are suffering extreme need and anxiety. Okay. All right. Now I got to go here. Where's my notes? I got notes everywhere. Lord Jesus, help me. Where did I put that definition? Oh, right here. Duh. First of all, listen to this definition of need. Necessary duty, obligation, a lack of something desired or useful, a condition requiring supply or relief, poverty to be in one. We, the Bible says that we don't, okay, let me, let me go with the, with the let me go to what the scripture says. Listen to this. Listen to this, y'all. I, I got to just give you the word. Second Corinthians nine and eight out of the Amplified Bible. I say this scripture every single day. This blesses my whole entire life. Listen to me. And God is able to make all grace ever, every favor and earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that I may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need, 
whatever I stand in the need of, listen to me, whatever I need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, furnishing abundance in every good work and charitable nation. Listen to me. This is the word of God that I'm telling you today. You have a need. God tells me that he is going to give me enough to require no, be sufficient, be possessing enough to require no aid or support. What does that mean? I don't need any aid or support. That means I have more than enough. I have abundance. I declare and decree every day that I'm rich. I declare and decree every day that I'm a millionaire. I declare and I decree every day that I'm walking in the blessings of God. Why? Because I require no aid or support. I am the lender and not the borrower. I don't have to figure out how I'm going to get the money. I don't have to figure out who I got the call to get the money. I go to my daddy and I say, God, you said in your word, first of all, if I tithe and I give in Malachi, you said, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. I'm putting you to the test. I'm testing testing you. I, I pay my tithes religiously on all my increase. I give a seed every single day. I sow a seed every single day, a financial seed every single day at five, between five and 6 a.m. When I sit down here and I go to do my confessions, I sow my seed. Because that's how I need to reap my seed. I need that seed to keep coming in. I need it to keep, I need my cash app to ring. I need my PayPal to ring. Why? Because I got too much work to do. And I can't be desperate. God, I'm going to do it. God told me to do it. What are, how I'm gonna, no, God, you told me to do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to trust you to work it out. I'm going to thank you because you said in your word that all my need is met. So the need is met. And th that settles it. Like, I'm not going to keep worried about it. I don't know how it's going to happen. That ain't my responsibility. Don't you embarrass yourself, God, because if you don't do it, then what? That, that's going to look bad on you because I'm your child and it's your job to take care of me. So either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Like I'm not about to sit here and box with God. My arms is too short to box with God. All I'm going, all I got to do is trust him. I don't got to argue with God. I don't got to fight with God. I don't got to pray out of desperation. I don't got to pray out of fear. I don't got to pray out of anxiety. All I got to do is trust him. Get an agreement with him. That's what his word says. All he wants to do is get an agreement with him. He wants us to agree with what his word says. Your word says it. I agree with it. That settles it. Point blank, period. All right. Let's go to what anxiety means. Now, this right here, if you guys don't get this, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm just going to keep teaching until you get it. Okay. Anxiety is apprehensive uneasiness or nervousness. There is too many uneasy, nervous people, believers in the world. We should not be nervous. We should not be uneasily. Usually an over impeding or anticipated ill. You're, you're fearing what the doctors are saying. You're fearing what the, the landlord is saying. You're fearing what the car people are saying. You, we're, 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 we're fearing the wrong thing. What was that scripture? What was which one? Oh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. I think that was the one I just read. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And that was out of the Amplified Version. Um, Where am I at? Okay, a state of being anxious. An abnormal and overwhelming sense of apprehension and fear offered often marked by Physical signs, mental distress, physical signs. You sweating, you, you, your heart palpitations, you're nervous, you're feeling anxious. All, you, it's physical signs. Now, the physical things are manifesting from anxiety. You know you don't went too far. When you, when you can't control what you're going through. When you can't control your feelings and your emotions. And you're just like, oh God, I can't. This is too much. I can't take it, God. I Where is your praise at? Where's your thanksgiving at? And everything give thanks. <laughs> For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. And everything. And my lack, thank you. And my not enough, thank you. And my sick, and this sickness, thank you. Well, first of all, let's back up a little bit. And this lack, and this not enough, not mine. That ain't mine. That, that don't belong to me. But we take it, I'm in lack, I'm in, I don't have enough, right? We take it as our own and we literally agree with it. I don't got enough, I'm broke. No, I got more than enough. And I might not know honestly how I'm going to do it, but I got more than enough. That's what I decree and declare. 
God, your favor goes before me and prepares the way for me. I am favored. I am favored by the most high God. I have unspeakable uh, uh, amounts of favor. I, I make it happen for other people. So God, you got to do it for me. Like there's this non-negotiable, like I'm your child. And my kids call me and ask me, like, I don't, my kids, they come here, they go in my refrigerator, they go in my, they just go in whatever they want and they get what they want. They know I'm their mom and I'm not going to tell them no. And when people come to my house, like if we have a relationship and you come to my house and you start asking me for stuff, I get a little irritated. Because I'm like, can you just go get the darn water out the refrigerator? You're really asking me for water? Like, will you just get it out the refrigerator? Like, really? I get aggravated. God is the same way. He was like, will you just believe me? Will you just trust me? Will you just get in agreement with me, please? Like, he's like, really, like, will you just do it? That's where you got to get to, you know, you can just say, God, I, this is what I want. He said he will give you your wants and your desires. He knows your need. He's going to meet your need, but you got to believe him. Okay, let me get back to the scripture. All right. Mental distressing. We are mentally stressing out over things that God did not ordain for us to stress out over. We got to get in a place of praise. There is power in our praise. There is victory and joy and peace in our praise. I don't understand it. God, this don't make no sense. This hurts. I don't know, but I'm going to praise you. And I dare you to just start praising him. I dare you. Start clapping your hands. Start saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I love you. Lord, you're going to work it out. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. It ain't my job to figure it out. It's my job to praise you. It's my job to worship you. It's my job to magnify you. It's my job to trust you. It's my job to get in agreement with you. It's my job to think on those things that are above and not on things on the earth. It's my Listen, I promise you, if you start doing that, it's got to change. It's got to change. I promise you. I, listen, one time, this was years ago, my husband, we used to argue so much. We used to fight so much. It was just ridiculous. And so God started giving me this revelation of praise. And when you're in, and when you're in the midst of it and you're having all these issues, just start praising me. Go to Psalms, go to the book of Psalms and read the book of Psalms, right? It's the book of praises. Okay. So he start. he was there. He was going he wanted to have an argument and he's going. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I praise you because me and my husband have a good relationship. You're working. And he's looking at me like, are you crazy? Yup, I'm crazy enough to praise God because you about to try to get me to go off. And we about to, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm tired of arguing. I'm tired of fighting. We're going to have a good marriage, a good relationship. And I started praising God. You know what happened? He just eventually shut up. Because you're going to look like a fool arguing by yourself. First, I got, oh, you so holier than now. Oh, now you so saved. Oh, now, Lord, I thank you. I'll be so saved. I'll be so holier than now. I'll be so whatever you want to call me. You want to know why? Because we're not about to do that. Because every time we do that, we open up a door for the enemy to come in and keep fighting. The spirit of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over. I need different results to happen in my life. So I got to do something different. So I'll be that Jesus freak. I'll be that so heavenly mind that I'm no earthly. I'll be that person. If you're talking about me, then obviously I'm making an impact. Obviously I'm doing something different. That's disturbing your peace. So, oh, well, I don't know what to tell you. If you come on over here and praise and me or whatever the case may be that's where you got to get the devil's messing with you he don't he stop letting him defeat you mental distressing concern or interest a strong desire sometimes mixed with doubt fear and uneasiness <laughs> this is anxious we got to be anxious for nothing the bible says be anxious for nothing but by prayer and, and and meditation make your request be made known unto god be anxious for nothing philippians 4 and 6 and this is out of the new king james version it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. Listen to me. I just said this. I just said this. First of all, be anxious for nothing. So there's no reason for you to operate in the anxiousness that I just said. You should not have physical signs. You should not be operating there because that's not where we're supposed to operate. That is the opposite of what the word God says. It says, be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious. Don't operate in doubt. 
Don't operate in fear. Don't operate in uneasiness because that's not what I called you to do. But in everything by prayer, don't pray desperate. Don't pray, God, please, please don't beg God in your prayer. Ask and it shall be given. All you have to do is knock and it shall be open. All you got to do is do what the Bible tells you. Stop making up your own um, uh your own um, interpretation of what the scripture says. Stop allowing the devil to defeat you. Listen to me. I'm telling you now, I am living the life that I'm telling you. I am currently doing this in my life. I refuse. I refuse, y'all. You have to refuse to get in agreement with the enemy. With thanksgiving and everything give thanks. <laughs> Thanksgiving is powerful. Listen to me. Thanksgiving is powerful. I have literally sat on my bed, in my chair, in my car and cried. Lord, I thank you. This does not feel good. These are tears of pain. But in my pain, in my agony, in my frustration, in my disbelief, I choose to praise you. That's what he wants from us. He wants us to praise him in spite of. Yes, I just lost a loved one. Yes, I just got a diagnosis that wasn't favorable. Yes, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. Yes, I don't know how it's going to happen. But God, I choose to thank you. Let your requests, let your prayers be made known unto him. And then thank him for doing it. All you have to do is pray one time. That's it. You ask him one time and then you thank him for doing it. Let your faith be built up. Let your faith get to the point where you can touch the heart of God in such a way that he is mandated to bless you. That he is going out of his way to bless you. That he is sending men and women your way to bless you. To open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That you don't have enough room to receive it. I walk in the not enough receiving miracle blessings of God. I don't have enough room to receive all the blessings that God is sending my way. He going to give me a bigger house. He's giving me a better car. He's giving me a bigger bank account. He's giving me more than I could ever ask, think, or imagine. Why? Because that's what his scripture says. But we have to get in agreement. Well, what God's word says. What does his word say about you? What does, his, what does the report of the Lord say about you? His report says I am healed. His report says I have all my need is met. His report says that my, my relationships are flourishing and thriving in God. <coughs> Stop settling for less than God's best for you. Don't settle. This decree and declare with me today is the last day that I will settle for God's less than in my life. No more lack. No more sickness. No more disease. I don't care how I feel. I don't care if I'm limping. I don't care if I'm on oxygen. I don't care if I'm on dialysis. I don't care if I'm getting chemo. I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And his report says I am healed. His report says all my need is met. His report says that I can have whatsoever I ask for. I'm only going to ask him once. And then I'm going to thank him because he's going to bring it to pass. Will you trust God enough? Will you get in agreement with God enough to literally say what his word says when it don't feel like it's looking like favorable for you? I want to pronounce this blessing upon you today. Proverbs 11 and 25. This blessed my socks off this morning. The generous man, and this is out of the Amplified Bible, and this is Proverbs eleven twenty five. 25. The generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters will himself be watered, reaping the generosity he has sown. 
Be generous in your praise. Be generous in your worship. Be generous in your love for God. Give him everything you got. Lord, I love you with my mind, my will, my emotions, with everything in me. I want to please you. I just want to get in agreement with you. Stop settling. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't agree with the devil. Don't agree with the doctors. Agree with God. For God I live, for God I die. <laughs> That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. That's where I choose to live. I choose to live in the blessing zone. I choose to live in the love zone. I choose to live in the in the happy zone. I choose to live in the healed zone. I choose to live in the wealth zone. I choose to live in the zone that God has already promised me that's mine. I'm his child. I told my daughter, I was talking to her yesterday. I said, I be getting a whole attitude. I really be getting a whole attitude because I'm like, I'm God's child. There's no way in the world I should live like this. There's no way in the world I should be going through this. I'm his child. What do I need to learn with what I'm going through so I don't have to go through this again? So that I can live the life that God designed me for me to live. So that I can actually see the fruits of my labor. So that I can actually see that what God promised me, he's going to do it. So guess what? I'm in a season where I only say what God's word says. Point blank period. And if I speak anything other than God's words, the moment that God convicts me, I repent. The moment I repent, God forgives me, then I'm back on track. What did I say? The blessings are pouring out. I'm just out of line because I done said or did something that took me out of the will of God. I repent. I'm back in line for the blessings. I refuse to get so far from the blessing that I can't just repent and get back on line. You have to understand that God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you in your health, bless you in your wealth, bless you coming in, bless you going out. God wants you blessed, but you have to get in agreement with what his word says about you. Amen? Amen. This word was good to me today. I know it was good for you. So if you have not already, please share this on your timeline. Tag somebody in this video. This video will change somebody's life. I promise you that I'm going to only give you what God's word gives me. In the way of announcements, every single morning, Monday through Friday, I am live at 8 a.m. You want to be here every single morning. And that is Eastern Standard Time. You want to make sure that you're tuning in every single Monday through Friday morning at 8 a.m. So that you can get what God has for you. So that you can increase your faith. So you can increase your strength. So you can increase your courage. So you can learn how to praise. Learn how to love. Learn how to be what God called you to be. I'm only going to give you what God gives me to give you. And when he's done, I'm done. Point blank period. Like I told God, I will obey you. I will do it. Because I don't want to do it. I don't feel qualified. I don't feel good enough. But because you told me to do it, I'm going to do it. So set an alarm. I, when, when I want to do something, I set an alarm. My spiritual mom teaches Ridiculous Faith on Facebook every single week, Monday through Friday. I have an alarm set that says Ridiculous Faith at 9.55 a.m. To remind me that I need to be in five minutes, I need to be tuning into Facebook. Because my spiritual mom is about to come on and be teaching. And I need that word in my life. And I have my notebook. And my pen ready to take notes. Because I don't have time to play with the enemy. So all you have to do is set an alarm for Mornings with Lady T Talks at 7.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that you can be here to watch me every single Monday through Friday. I was seven days a week, but I have to take care of myself. And I was overdoing it, overextending myself. So I take the weekends off to get prepared for the next week. Because I want to give you... My absolute best. I don't I don't serve you from an empty saucer. I serve you from the plate that the overflow is flowing on. If you have not gotten a copy of my books, you want to order your copy today. I promise you that you will not be disappointed. I promise you that you'll be blessed. If you take the next 90 days and be intentional about Lining yourself up in agreement with what God's word says about you. I promise you your life will change. I promise you I'll stop teaching if it don't. I promise you. If you are intentionally focused for the next 90 days to change your life, I promise you God will do it. I promise you. Here's a, here's a map to help you. This is 31 days of Mornings with Lady T devotional. This talks about mindset. This talks about knowing who you are. This talks about your worth for $12. For the next 31 days, your life can change. It can shift. $12, that's it. 
90 days. I just said 90 days. This book here will literally transform you from where you are to where you want to be. It's time for you to start living the life that God ordained for you to live. Stop living in agreement with the devil. Start living where, where God said you're supposed to live. $15. It's a journal. But in this journal, it's not just a journal. You're going to be intentionally focused on the power of your I am affirmations. Every single day. I have my one here. I do. This is the one. This is what your copy will look like. I use my proof ones for me. Today, I'm going to share with you mine. Today was I in favor and blessed to, to those and I am a blessing to those that are in my life. And then I wrote down what I was grateful for. What God, what, what, how God, I'm grateful for God wanting to bless me. Today I'm grateful for God using me for his glory. I'm thankful for your favor in my life and helping me to be favored to somebody else. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me how to agree with your word. And, what, and believing what your word says concerning me. Thank you for your grace and mercy towards me. Thank you for teaching me how to serve people and how to be effective today. Thank you for changing the life, changing my life and that I'm able to change those lives around me forever. Thank you for your many blessings in my life. Thank you for reminding me whose I am and who I am. Thank you because I am your child and I am forever favored and rich in you. Thank you, Lord. Every single day, I write in my book. I'm, this is my journal. I'm thanking God. If it's, a, if it's a day that I need to brain dump, I do that. That's what this book does. And if you struggle, you say, well, I don't know who I am. I don't know what to say. Then go to the back of the book for free. It comes with the book. I am talented. I am powerful. I am open-minded. I am strong. I am loyal. I am faithful. I am enough. I am worthy. I am joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I am blessed. I am forgiven. I am the righteousness of God. I am a child of God. I have been justified and redeemed. I am accepted by Christ. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Listen to me. It's in here. It's five to six pages. Go back in the back of the book and write, I am, and tell yourself who you are you will become and manifest what you say out of your mouth be intentional $15 I don't want to show you that one that's mine that's the proof one that's not what you're gonna look like be intentional $15 you can't go wrong you get both of them you save five dollars it's 22 dollars I promise you it'll change your life the link is in my bio all you have to do is go click the link with the books you'll see the picture of the books on there it'll take you to my Etsy account Order your copy today. Order your copy today. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Like, it'll help you. Seriously, it'll help you. Um, I will mail it out today and I'll give you a free gift, okay? So you want to order your copy today. You want to tune in. Now go to my website, Lady T Talks, L-A-D-Y-T, T-A-L-K-S dot com and subscribe to my email list. You want to stay up to date with what I got going on because there's a lot of things in the works. God is doing some amazing things and you want to be a part, right? So you want to subscribe to my email list at Lady T, the letter T talks dot com, L-A-D-Y-T, T-A-L-K-S, see, Lady T talks. That's what it is. All one word dot com. Subscribe to my email list. Listen, every single morning at 5 a.m., you'll get an inspirational, motivational email from me. I'm not trying to buy, get you to buy nothing. I mean, the link to my books is in my email. I mean, I'm going to promote myself because I am my brand, but I'm not trying to upsell you on anything. I literally just want to help you. You'll be a part of a series of emails that will give you my county link so that you can schedule your free 30 minute clarity call with me. Let me help you. Like stop struggling. Stop living in lack. Stop living in where God doesn't want you to live and let me help you. I know you got value today. So let me help you. The first call is free. Absolutely free. Let me, let me, let me give you this opportunity. I have my signature program is called the transformation program. That program's value is of $1,000. I normally charge $400. I am doing it absolutely free. Absolutely free. Yes, I said the word free. I'm going to send you all the material you need because I really want to bless you. I'm doing that program for free. The next uh, uh, group that I'm doing is going to be next Friday. You have to register. You have to inbox me and tell me that you want to come. I will send you the information you need to be able to get you started next Friday at uh, 
What time did I say? I think it's at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's via Zoom, so you don't have to meet me nowhere. You just log on to Zoom. If you don't know how to get on a Zoom, I can walk you through it. Listen, you want to be a part of what I'm doing. I promise you. I promise you, you want to be a part. So that starts next Friday. If you want to be a part, you have to inbox me. There is no link to do it. You just have to inbox me. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, whatever. I said it all. I'm on all social media platforms. So you want to um, follow me, okay? Inbox me on Instagram or Facebook if you can. Um, so I can get you the information that you need if you want to be a part of anything that I'm doing. You want to go to my website, check me out. I'm going to start putting my announcements up there because I have a lot of things coming out. I just did two t-shirts that are going to be coming out. You guys want to be a part. Like seriously, you want to get in where you fit in. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for those that tuned in today. I pray that you would touch them, that you would move on their life now. I pray, oh God, that you would seal the word in our heart and our mind, oh God, because we know the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. We thank you, oh God, that you would seal it in our heart and our mind, that it, the enemy can't get it out. We thank you and praise you that you will watch over your word to perform it in our life. Help us to get in agreement with you. Help us to stop living in lack and not enough. Help us to stop operating in our flesh, oh God, and doing things our way. And help us to learn to trust you, oh God, the way you told us to do in your word. Help us to walk in faith and not fear. Help us to get out of anxiety and anxiousness and desperateness. And help us to, oh God, God, to be who you called us to be today. Help us to stand flat footed on your word, knowing that if you said it, you'll bring it to pass. Help us to speak to every mountain in our life in Jesus name, every mountain of lack, every mountain of sickness, every mountain of disease, every mountain of not enough, every mountain of lack. We curse you now in Jesus name. We send you back to hell from where you came in Jesus name. We thank you and praise you for doing it. Touch every person watching this video, whether they're watching it live or watching a replay. I ask you, God, to touch them and meet them at the point of their need today in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare that their life will never be the same because they turned this video on today. In Jesus' name, we give you the praise, the glory, and honor for it now. Amen and amen. You want to be a part of Lady T. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Amen. You guys have an amazing weekend. It is Friday. So have an amazing weekend. I pray to see you come back on Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, be blessed. Have a smile upon you is my prayer. Love you guys.